Thanks for tuning in. You're watching My CDL Buddy, and I'm your host. Today I'm going to show you how to do a pre-trip inspection on the Class A tractor trailer. Let's get started. Now we're going to conduct a CDL pre-trip inspection on a Class A tractor trailer with air brakes. When you do your CDL exam with the examiner, you can get one of three forms. The front of the vehicle, the side of the vehicle, or the trailer. No matter what form you get on the Class A tractor trailer, you always have to do the coupling devices, your external light operation check, and your in-cab. So let's start with the front of the truck first. First thing I do on the front form of the vehicle, it's going to be starting from the top to the bottom of the vehicle. First we're going to start with our clearance lights. They're not broken, not cracked, on secure. They are proper color. They act as running lights when they are on. Then we're going to move down to our headlights. The headlights are not broken, not cracked, on secure, clean and clear. All the bulbs, all the lenses are not broken, not cracked, on secure, proper color. They have four functions. The functions are headlights, high beams, four-way flashers, and turn signal indicators. Finally, on the front of the truck, we're going to look under the truck to make sure there is no leaks or nothing hanging under the vehicle. Now we're going to move on and open up the hood to start with the engine compartment. First thing I'm doing is unlatching the hood on both sides. Then I'm going to open the hood safely. Now we're going to move to the passenger side of the engine compartment to do the unique items first. We're going to start with the unique side, which is the passenger side of the engine compartment. First thing we're going to do, we're going to look at all the lines, all the hoses, make sure they're not broken, not cracked, on secure, and there are no leaks. Make sure you check every line and every hose possible. After that, we're going to check our coolant reservoir. The coolant reservoir, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, not leaking at proper level. Also, the cap is on tight. It's not broken, cracked, or leaking, and there is nothing spilling out of it. After that, we're going to check our alternator. The alternator, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure. This alternator, it is belt driven. The belt, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, proper tension. Under the alternator, we're going to look for our water pump. The water pump, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, there are no leaks. This water pump is belt driven. The belt, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, it has proper tension. That's all we need to check on the unique side of this vehicle. Now we're going to move on to the driver's side of the engine compartment to check all the regular items. Now we're going to inspect the regular side of the engine compartment, which is the driver's side. Same thing as the unique side. First thing I want to check is all the lines, all the hoses, make sure they're not broken, not cracked, on secure, and not leaking. After that, we're going to check for our oil dipstick. The oil dipstick, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure. To check our oil, we'll pull out the dipstick, wipe it off, put it back in, pull it back out to make sure it's at proper level. Now you do not have to do this during your exam, but explain it and talk about it. The oil cap is on tight and not leaking. Next thing we gotta check for, is gonna be our air compressor. Our air compressor, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, not leaking any air, and this air compressor is gear driven. The next item on our list is going to be hidden in the back of the engine compartment is our power steering pump. The power steering pump, it's not broken, not cracked, unsecured, not leaking. This power steering pump is gear driven. Now we're going to look at the power steering fluid reservoir. It's not broken, not cracked, unsecured. It's at proper level. There are no leaks coming out of it or any of the hoses. All the hoses are on tight. They're not broken, not cracked, on secure. 
The cap is on tight. There are no leaks coming out of the cap. Next item on the list, we're going to check your steering gearbox. The steering gearbox, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, not leaking any fluids. All the steering gearbox hoses and lines are not broken, not cracked, on secure, and not leaking. Connected to the steering gearbox, we have our three-piece steering linkage. The steering linkage, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, no welds. Now we're going to check our frame. Our frame, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, there are no welds on the frame. We're going to get into our suspension area and start off with the spring mount. The spring mount, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, the front spring mount. The spring leaf, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, not scissoring. The U-bolts, they're not broken, not cracked, on secure, bolts are on tight. My shock absorber, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, and not leaking. My rear spring mount, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure. Now we're going to move in to do all the braking items. We're going to start with the brake line and hose. My brake line and brake hose, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, not leaking. My brake chamber, it's not broken, not cracked on secure, not leaking. My slack adjuster and my push rod, they're not broken, not cracked, on secure, and there is less than one inch of play for proper brake adjustments. The inside of my wheel, we're going to check for our brake drum. The brake drum, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure. My brake pad and lining, they're not broken, not cracked, on secure, there is at least a quarter inch of padding to be safe. My inner tire wall, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, no cuts, no leaks. The top of my tire, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, no cuts or leaks. My tread depth is a minimum of four and 32 seconds of an inch of tread depth. Now we're gonna do the front of our wheel. Now we're going to check the front of the wheel starting with the side wall of the tire. The tire, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, no cuts or leaks. My rim, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, no illegal welds. I would check all my lug nuts to make sure they're not broken, not cracked, on secure, they are on tight. Then we're going to check our axle seal to make sure it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, it's not leaking. And then we're going to find finally our valve stem to make sure it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, there's a cap on it. On the valve stem with the tire gauge, I would check for the tire pressure to make sure there has at least 105 PSI in the tire to be safe and adequate with our tire pressure. Now what we're going to do, we're going to close the hood latch it tight, and move on to the side of the vehicle to do the next form on the inspection. Now that we're done with the front form on this vehicle, we're going to move on to the side form. The side form starts with the driver door. It includes the side of the vehicle, the underside of the vehicle, one rear axle of the vehicle and the rear of the vehicle. Let's start off with our door area. First thing I'm going to check is my driver door. Make sure it's not broken, not cracked, on secure. My mirror bracket and mirror mount, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure. The marker light on the mirror, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure. It is proper color. It acts as a running light. My lenses on my mirror, they're not broken, not cracked, on secure, clean and clear. Now we're going to check the function of our door and door handle. My door handle, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure. It opens and closes freely. I'm going to open the door to inspect my door hinges. My door hinges. They're not broken, 
not cracked, on secure. I'm going to close my door and move to my side marker light. My side marker light, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure. The functions are marker light, running light, emergency flashers, and signal light. Next, we're going to check our steps. The steps are not broken, not cracked, on secure, clean and clear, no debris to slip on. Next, we're going to move on to our deaf tank. Our deaf tank, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure. There are no leaks coming from under the deaf tank. All the hoses and lines are on secure, not cut, not broken, not cracked, not leaking. Our deaf cap, it's on secure, it's on tight. There is no leaks coming from it. After that, we're going to move on to inspect our fuel tank. Our fuel tank, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, no leaks. Our fuel lines and fuel hoses, they're not broken, not cracked, on secure, not leaking, on tight. My fuel cap, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, has a safety chain and rubber seal. It is not leaking. There are no leaks coming from under my fuel tank. Now we're going to move on and go back to the catwalk and rear steps. Now we're going to talk about our catwalk. Our catwalk, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure no oil or debris to slip on. Our side step, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, no debris to slip on. Our frame, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, there are no illegal welds. My exhaust, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, has no holes, there is no black suck coming out of it except at the tip of the exhaust. Now we're gonna look at our drive shaft. Our drive shaft, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure. After we're finished with the drive shaft, I'm going to go inside and find my torque arm. My torque arm, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure. Now we're going to move on to our braking components. I'll start with the brake hoses and the brake lines. All the brake hoses and lines are not broken, not cracked, on secure, there are no leaks. My brake chamber, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, no leaks. Under my brake chamber, which is very hard to see, is my slack adjuster and push rod. My slack adjuster and push rod, they're not broken, not cracked, on secure. You want to check them, make sure there is no more than one inch of play for proper brake adjustment. Once I'm done with that, I'm going to go into my suspension area before I get to my brake drum, not to miss any items. Let's start with my suspension. My spring mount, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure. My spring leafs and control arm, they're not broken, not cracked, on secure, not scissoring. My U-bolts, which are back here, they're not broken, not cracked, on secure. Behind my U-bolts, I have my shock absorber. It's not broken, not cracked, on secure, not leaking. Now we're going to go behind that to check my spring mount and my airbag. Now we're going to check the airbag. It's not broken, not cracked, on secure, and not leaking. Here we have our spring mount on the rear. It's not broken, not cracked, on secure. Now we're going to go back to check our brake drum, brake pads or lining, and then move on to the tire and wheel. Now we're going to move back to the brake drum. The brake drum, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure. Next to the brake drum, we have our brake linings or pads. They're not broken, not cracked, on secure. There is a sufficient amount of padding to be safe. Our side wall on the tires, they're not broken, not cracked, on secure, no cuts, no leaks. The front of the rear tires, they're not broken, not cracked, on secure. Tread depth has to be two and thirty seconds of an inch at the minimum. 
in between these tires, by our bud spacing, there is no dead animal, no debris, no foreign objects in there. Now we're going to move to the front of our wheel and our tire. Now we're going to check the sidewall of the tire and also our wheel area. We'll start with the tire. The sidewall, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, no cuts, no leaks. Our rim, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, no illegal welds. Check all our lug nuts, make sure they're not broken, not cracked, on secure, and not loose or missing. Our axle seal, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, all the bolts are on tight, there is no leaks under the axle seal. Our valve stem, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure. The cap is on tight. I would check the valve stem with the tire gauge to make sure I have at least 105 PSI of air in my tire. Now we're going to move on to the back end of the tractor. Now we're going to move to the end of the tractor, our final part of the side of the vehicle portion. We're going to start with our mud flaps. They're not broken, not cracked, on secure not dragging on the ground with proper clearance. The bracket that holds the mud flap is not broken, not cracked, on secure. Our DOT reflective tape on the mud flap at the end of the vehicle, it's clean and clear. The two tail lights on the back end, they're not broken, not cracked, on secure, red in color. They function as four-way emergency flashers, turn signals, brake lights, and running tail lights. That is it for the side of the tractor. Now we're gonna move on to our coupling devices. Now we're gonna do our coupling devices. No matter what form you get on the pre-trip inspection, you will have to do the coupling devices. Today we're gonna do the coupling devices before we do our trailer portion. So let's start with the connections, the airlines, hoses, and electric line. First thing we wanna check, Make sure every line, every hose, it's not broken, not cracked, not leaking, on secure. Let's start with the airlines. The red airline is the emergency brake line. The glad hands that connect to the trailer are not broken, not cracked, on secure, not leaking any air, connected properly. The blue line that's connected to the trailer by the glad hand, that's our service brake line. It's not broken, not cracked, on secure, no leaks, connected to the trailer properly. The green line is our electric line. It's not broken, not cracked, on secure, connected to the trailer properly with the safety latch holding it in place. Now after checking all the hoses and lines, we're going to check our air connections to the tractor. Both sides of the connections are not broken, not cracked, on secure, not leaking. And then the electrical connection, just like on the trailer, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure. The safety latch is on tight. Now we're going to go to our fifth wheel assembly area for the next phase for the coupling devices. Now we're going to inspect the coupling items that connect the trailer and tractor together. First, we're going to start with the top, which is the apron. It's not broken, not cracked, on secure, no illegal welds. The fifth wheel skid plate, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, it's properly greased. There is no daylight in between the fifth wheel and apron. The safety latch, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, the bolt's on tight. Our release arm, it's in lock position, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, you want to make sure that it works properly. Our mounting bolts on our platform, they're not broken, not cracked, on secure, all on tight. The platform, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure. This is not a sliding fifth wheel. If you had a sliding fifth wheel, you want to make sure that the locking pins are on tight and locked properly. Now we're going to go to the back end of the tractor to check for our locking jaws and our kingpin by our fifth wheel skid plate. Now we're going to inspect the locking jaws and the kingpin on the coupling device area. The locking jaws, they're not broken, not cracked, on secure, properly locked around our kingpin. Our kingpin, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, it is properly greased. After we do that, we have to ensure that we have enough space 
between our landing gear and the end of our tractor for proper clearance. Now we're done with our coupling devices and we're going to move on to the final portion of the pre-trip, which is our trailer. Now we're going to inspect the trailer portion of the pre-trip inspection on the Class A tractor trailer. We're going to start off with the front of the trailer first. I usually start from top to bottom. On the top of the trailer, the clearance lights, they're not broken, not cracked, on secure, proper color. They function as running lights. The front headboard of the trailer, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, no holes, no daylight coming in and out of it. Then we're going to go to the side of the trailer, start from top to bottom, from front to back. I would check all my clearance lights, make sure they're not broken, not cracked, on secure. They're all proper color and functioning. They function as running lights. Then I would do all my DOT reflective tape on the side of the trailer, make sure it's clean and clear, the proper amount. After that, we're going to move down to our landing gear. Now we're going to inspect the landing gear on the trailer. Make sure your landing gear devices are not broken, not cracked, on secure. The bottom base and legs, they're not broken, not cracked, on secure. You would check your arm to make sure it brings your landing gear up and down and the landing gear arm is secured properly on the landing gear device hook. Now we're going to move down to check our side marker light and then move on to the underside of the trailer and the back axles. The side marker light, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, proper color. It functions as a running light, turn signal light, and a four-way emergency flasher indicator. Now let's go to the back axle and the underside of the trailer. Now we're going to inspect the underside of our trailer and one of the rear axles. So on the underside of our trailer, first thing we want to check as a sliding tandem trailer to make sure that the rail it's not broken, not cracked, on secure and the locking pin, it's in place. Then we're going to check our trailer frame to make sure it's not broken, not cracked, on secure. Under that, we're going to talk about our spring mount to make sure that it's not broken, not cracked, on secure. The control arm behind the mount, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure. We want to check all our lines and hoses for our sliding tandem to make sure they're not broken, not cracked, on secure, not leaking any air. After that, we're going to move on to check all our brake hoses and lines to make sure they're not broken, not cracked, on secure, not leaking. We're going to move on to our brake chamber. The brake chamber, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, not leaking. Under the brake chamber, which is very hard to see from here, you're going to check your slack adjuster and push rod. Make sure it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, has less than one inch of play for proper brake adjustment. And inside of this area, we're going to check our U-bolts. The U-bolts, they're not broken, not cracked, on secure. Then we're going to move to the back area of that front axle to check our airbag. Behind the front axle, we're going to check our airbag. Make sure our airbag is not broken, not cracked, on secure, not leaking, properly mounted to our trailer. Now we're going to go back and start off with the brake drum and brake pads. Now we're going to get into our brake drums. Our brake drums are behind the wheel. They're not broken, not cracked, on secure. Next to our brake drums, we have our brake pads. The brake pads are not broken, not cracked, on secure, with a sufficient amount of padding to be safe. The inner tire walls, they're not broken, not cracked, on secure, no cuts, no leaks. The front of the tires, they're not broken, not cracked, on secure. On the rear tires, such as these, you need at least 2 and 30 seconds of an inch tread depth at the minimum. Between the butt spacing on the rear tires, there is no dead animal, no debris, no foreign objects in there to impede the wheel function. Now we're going to go and check the front of the wheel and the side of the tire. Now we're going to talk about our tire and our wheel. The sidewall of the tire, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, no cuts, no leaks. 
My rim, it's not broken, not cracked, unsecure, and no illegal wells. Our lug nuts, they're not broken, not cracked, unsecure. None of them are loose or missing. Our axle seal, it's not broken, not cracked, unsecure. It's at proper level with a proper type of fluid with no leaks under it. Our valve stem, it's not broken, not cracked, unsecure, has a cap. I would check the valve stem with a tire gauge to make sure there is at least 105 PSI of air in my tire. Now we're gonna move on to the rear end of the trailer. Now we're gonna check the rear mud flap on the back of the trailer. The mud flap, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure. Proper clearance, it's not dragging to the ground. We're gonna check the rear side marker lights on the trailer. The first light is the ABS light. It's not broken, not cracked, on secure, proper color. And the rear little light here, the red one, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, proper color. They're both clean and clear. This is gonna be a running marker light. Now we're gonna to go to the back of the trailer. Now we're gonna finish the trailer part of the inspection with inspecting the rear of the trailer. Same thing, I start from the top to the bottom, not to miss any items. Top portion of my trailer, I'm gonna look at my marker lights. They're not broken, not cracked, on secure, clean and clear, red in color. They are functioned as running lights. My doors, they're not broken, not cracked, on secure. My door locks and handles are not broken, not cracked, on secure. The door opens and closes properly. You do not have to do that during the inspection, but you just talk about it and explain it to your examiner. My rear tail lights, they're not broken, not cracked, proper color, clean and clear. The tail lights have four functions emergency flashers, signals, brake lights, and running tail lights. Last thing I want to check is going to be my DOT bumper. It's not broken, not cracked, on secure, and it has 100% reflective tape and it's clean and clear. Now we just finished off the trailer part of the inspection. I'm going to walk down the side of the passenger side of the vehicle to check if there's any unique items before we start our external light operation check. Once you have completed the pre-trip inspection on the outside of the vehicle, the next step is to do an external light operation check. Depending on what form you got, whether it's the front form, side form, or the trailer form of the vehicle for your inspection, that's where you will do your light check. Your examiner will read you the instructions. You'll hop in the truck and start your light check. So I'm gonna hop in the vehicle, to start with the front of the vehicle's external light operation check. When you get in the truck, you wanna make sure you have three points of contact at all times to ensure safety. Once you're in the vehicle, the first thing you wanna do is put your vehicle on electrical mode to power up your vehicle, but do not start your engine. Once the vehicle's in electric mode, you will start your external light operation check. Your examiner will stand either in front of the truck, behind the tractor, at the rear of the tractor, or behind the trailer to check the light's functions. Today we're going to start off with the front of the truck. The first lights that I want to check is my left turn signals. The left turn signal is on, the examiner will tell you if it's good and working. Then I'm gonna check my right turn signal. The right turn signal is on. The examiner will tell you if it's good and working. Then I'm gonna do my four-way emergency flashers. My four-way emergency flashers are on. The examiner will tell me if they are good and working. Then I will turn on my headlights. Once the headlights are on, you will tell the examiner my headlights and my clearance lights. The examiner will check those and let you know if they're good and working. The last lights that I'll check on the front of the vehicle are gonna be my high beams. You tell the examiner, check my high beams, the high beams, they are good and working. Now we're gonna to move to do the rear of the tractor. On the rear of the tractor, the lights I'm gonna check are gonna be, first of all, my brake lights. The brake lights are working. Now I'm gonna move on to do my turn signals. My left turn signal, it is working. 
My right turn signal, the examiner says it's working. My four-way flashers, they are working. And I'll turn on my headlights so my tail lights can turn on and the examiner will tell you if they're working. The next light check I'm gonna do is on the rear of the trailer. On the rear of the trailer, very similar to the back of the tractor. First thing I'm gonna do is my brake lights. I'm gonna push down my brake pedal. My examiner will check my brake lights on the rear of the trailer to tell me that they are working. Then I'm gonna do my left signal indicator. It is working. Then I'm gonna do my right signal indicator. It is working. I'm gonna do my four-way emergency flashers, make sure they are working. Then I'm gonna turn on my headlights to turn on my running tail lights and my rear marker lights. Make sure they are all working. Once I'm done with all the lights, I will tell my examiner that I am finished with all my lights on my external light operation check and I'm ready for my in cab. After performing an external light operation check, the examiner will tell you to sit tight in the truck, they'll hop in the vehicle, and read you instructions on your in-vehicle inspection and engine start portion of the pre-trip. Now don't forget to do all your braking tests during the in-cab. That is part of your in-cab. The examiner will not explain that to you. You have to know that yourself. So let's start the in-cab. The first thing I do, I move from left to right. I'm gonna reach for my seatbelt. My seatbelt, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, no cuts, no frays. It buckles and unbuckles freely. During your in-cab, leave your seatbelt on. My driver's side mirror, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, clean and clear, properly adjusted to my view. My windshield, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, no illegal stickers blocking my vision. My passenger side mirror, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, clean and clear. Now we're gonna talk about our emergency equipment. First thing I wanna mention is my fire extinguisher. It's in the back of my cab. It's not broken, not cracked, on secure, fully charged, proper type. It's secured to the floor, not rolling around. Then we're gonna mention our three reflective triangles. They're not broken, not cracked, on secure. They are clean. They're in the back of the cab also. Then in my cubby on my overhead, I have my emergency spare fuses. They're not broken, not cracked, on secure, properly placed for me to use. Now we're gonna jump into the engine start portion. We have to do a safe start initially. To do a safe start, we're gonna put the vehicle in electrical mode, make sure our ABS light comes on and goes off. If it stays on, we have an ABS issue. Then we make sure our vehicle is in neutral, our parking brakes are on, I'm gonna push in my clutch all the way to the floor and start my vehicle. Once the vehicle is running, I'm gonna go and look at all my items on my dashboard, all my gauges. First gauge I wanna look at is my engine oil pressure gauge. It's not broken, not cracked, on secure, it's at proper level. My water temperature gauge, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, either it's rising or at proper level. My battery volt gauge, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, it is at proper wattage or voltage. My fuel gauge, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, it is at proper level, enough fuel for me to get to a fueling site or to finish my trip. My def gauge, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure. I have a proper amount of def fluid in my vehicle, and also my light is working on there. My last gauges I'm gonna talk about is my air gauges, my primary and my secondary. They're not broken, not cracked, on secure, rising or at proper level. Once we do all the gauges, we're gonna go by the steering wheel area, move from left to right, not to miss anything. We're gonna check all our signal and indicators on our dash. We'll start off with the left signal indicator. It is properly working. Right signal indicator. It is properly working. Four-way flashers. They're properly working. And my high beams. They are properly working. Some trucks you have to turn on the headlights in order 
for the high beams to function. This truck you do not. On the same indicator bar, I'm going to push in the button to make sure my wipers are working. They are cleaning my windshield and my washers are spraying water onto my windshield. And that is happening right now. Next item, I'm going to test my city horn, my electric horn, it works properly. Then my air horn, my hair air horn works properly. Some air horns are on the steering wheel, some are on a string or a drawbar here by the driver's side door. After I'm done with that, we're going to move on to check our defrost and our floor heat. So when we do that, we got to adjust the vent sighting, turn on the heat, and turn the fan on so we can check it. I'm going to put my hand on the dashboard to make sure that the defrost is working, which it is. I can feel it now. And then I'm going to put my hand under where my feet are by the pedals to make sure that my floor heat works, and it does. We're going to turn off the fans, turn off the heat. Now we're going to move on to our braking test. Now remember, do not forget your braking test. Let's start our braking test. First test I'm going to do is my lab test leaks, alarms, buttons. So I have to tell the examiner I have at least 100 PSI of air or more and my air tanks are full, which they are. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to put my vehicle in gear. With my clutch down, I'm going to turn off the truck, release my clutch, put my vehicle in electrical mode, put my foot on the service brake to hold the truck and release both of my parking brakes. Once I release my parking brakes, I will wait a few seconds for the air to let out. We're going to do step number one on our lab test. I will, I will hold the service brake down with my foot for one minute. While I'm holding it down, I should have no leaks, no more than four PSI in that one minute. Either I'm going to count that minute out or have my examiner time it out. So you do have to wait that one minute. So let's start counting. Okay, my minute is up. I did not lose more than four PSI of air during that minute for my initial test on my air brake check. Second test we're gonna do, test number two, it's gonna be A for alarms on the lab test. I'm gonna fan my service brake up and down till around 40 to 60 PSI and my alarm and or buzzer should come on to indicate that I have lost air in my air tanks. So let's do that now. I'm fanning my brake, my service brake with my foot to release the air. My alarm and buzzers did come on to indicate that I'm losing air pressure. Now I'm gonna keep fanning for my buttons, which is B on the lab test. Around 20 to 40 PSI, my button should pop out to make sure my emergency spring brakes do work. So let's start fanning. Keep on fanning till both buttons pop out. My buttons did pop out. That indicates that my emergency spring brakes are working my lab test was successful. Now we have to start our vehicle to build the air to do our service brake test and our parking brake test, the tug test. So let's start the vehicle and build air. Push, push the clutch in, put the vehicle in neutral, make sure both parking brakes are out and start your vehicle. Now to build the air quicker, I'm gonna push on the accelerator to around 10 to 15 RPM to help the air compressor work quicker. We have to build the air to a minimum of 100 PSI or more before we do the service brake test.
Now my gauges are almost full. Next step we're gonna do, we're gonna do our service brake test. We're gonna roll the vehicle about five to 10 miles per hour or 10 or 20 feet and see if the vehicle stops by using our service brake. To do that, we're gonna push in our clutch, step on our brake to make sure the vehicle stops properly and it does. Also, the vehicle did not sway from left to right or right to left to indicate a suspension problem. Now we're gonna put the vehicle back in neutral, let go of the clutch, pull out the parking brakes. The last test we're gonna do is our parking brake check. First, we're gonna test the tractor brake, then the trailer. How do we do that? Push in the clutch, put it into a low gear, we're gonna let go of the trailer brake, release it, and we're gonna test our tractor parking brake. We're gonna let go of the service brake and slowly let off the clutch till we feel a tug. And we do, there is no movement. The tractor parking brake is working properly. Now we're gonna release the trailer parking brake and pull out the tractor one. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna release on the clutch till we feel a tug and the trailer parking brake does not let us move or roll. So that is working properly. Now we're gonna release both brakes out, put the vehicle back into neutral, release the clutch, and turn off the vehicle. I feel confident that I completed the pre-trip and the in-cab fully, and I did not miss any items. Now remember, if you miss any items on the exterior or on the in-cab or messed up on the braking test, you can ask your examiner to go back on it. Even on the lab test, if you mess up on anything, you can ask the examiner to restart it. Once you restart it, start the truck, build the air, start from scratch, from step one. I feel confident in my pre-trip and I will let my examiner know my, my pre-trip and in-cab are fulfilled and finished. Thanks for watching.